नमस् शिवाय स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू द क्लास स्टूडेंट इन दिस क्लास वी विल स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर फ्रॉम द हिस्ट्री टेक्स्ट बुक ऑफ क्लास सेवन एंड द चैप्टर इज डिवोशनल पथ्स टू द डिवाइन स्टूडेंट यू मे हैव सीन पीपल परफॉर्म रिचुअल्स ऑफ वर्शिप और सिंगिंग भजन्स कीर्तन्स और कवालीज और इवन रिपीटिंग द नेम ऑफ गॉड इन साइलेंस एंड नोटिस्ड that some of them are moved to tears such intense devotion or love of god is the legacy of various kinds of bhakti and sufi movement that have evolved since the 8th century so in this chapter we will learn about the ideas of bhakti which developed between the 8th and 17th centuries and we will also try to find out or we will also try to highlight the major religious ideas and practices that began during this period so now let's start the chapter the idea of a supreme god before the formation of empires people worshiped different gods and goddesses but as kingdom grew into empires the idea that all living things pass through cycle of births rebirths and karma become widely accepted and popular one of the beliefs that developed from the 7th century onwards was the human beings are not equal not even at birth and social privileges are for those who are born in a higher caste many people did not believe in this idea and turned to buddhism or jainism where the path to salvation lies through personal efforts other people followed the idea of a supreme god where salvation that is freedom from birth and death could be achieved through devotion to one god and this is advised in bhagavad gita also which become very popular in these days shiva vishnu and durga become supreme deities and their myths and legends become a part of puranic stories the puranas introduced methods of worship in local cults and said that all devotees could get the blessing of the gods regardless of their caste the idea of bhakti became so popular that even buddhists and jains adopted these beliefs in the same time a new kind of bhakti idea emerged in south india under the influence of alvar and nayanar sants between the 7th and the 9th centuries there was an emergence of new religious movements led by nayanars those who were devotees of shiva and the alvars who were devotees of vishnu they both came from all castes including those considered even untouchables such as the pulayar and the panaras they criticized buddhist and jains and preached that love for shiva and vishnu was the path to salvation they believed in the ideals of love and heroism from the sangam literature and mixed them with values of bhakti nayanars and alvars wandered from place to place and composed unique poems and music in praise of their deities between the 10th and the 12th centuries the chola and the pandya kings built splendid temples around the shrines visited by these saint poets their poems were compiled and their hagiographies that is religious biographies were composed and even today they are sources of history for modern researchers now let's try to understand the philosophy and bhakti Sankaracharya one of the most influential philosopher of India born in Kerala in the 8th century he was a very influential thinker of India he was an advocate of advaita or the doctrine of the oneness of the human soul and the supreme soul which is formless and is the ultimate reality he advised people to give up worldly things because they are an illusion or maya 
and to follow the path of knowledge because it is the true path of salvation the another important philosopher was ramanuja ramanuja was born in tamil nadu in the 11th century and he was highly influenced by the philosophy of the alvar sent he thought that the path to salvation was through intense devotion to lord vishnu because the grace of the lord vishnu helps devotees to attain permanent bliss that is freedom and happiness he also suggested the theory of vishishta dvait or qualified oneness which says that even if a soul unites with the supreme soul it remains distinct and under the blessing of the supreme soul this ideology inspired a new form of bhakti in northern in northern india now let's see basavana's veer saivism the tamil bhakti movement and temple worship came together uh, came together to create the veer saiva movement that began in karnataka in the mid 12th century it was initiated by basavana and the other veer saivas such as allama prabhu and akka mahadevi they fought for the equality of all human beings and against the brahmanical ideas of caste and poor treatment of women they were also against religious rituals and idol worship so here we have seen that how does the ideas of bhakti become popular in south india but soon it reaches to maharashtra also and many marathi saints help to popularize the idea of bhakti in maharashtra so now let's see the saints of maharashtra between the 13th and the 17th century many saint poets such as sant janeshwar namdev eknath and tukaram women sant such as sakubai and the family of chokha mela from maharashtra inspired people to follow the bhakti of the vithala temple in pandharpur as well as that of the god that lives in the people's heart they rejected all kinds of rituals unnecessary display of pity and discrimination on the basis of caste they rejected the concept of renouncing the world and preferred to stay with their families and serve fellow human beings this was a new form of bhakti where happiness was in sharing the pain of others with this idea of bhakti a numbers of religious groups also emerged during this period like nathapanthis siddhas and yogis nathapanthis siddhas charas and yogis preached renunciation and taught that the path to salvation was through meditation on the formless ultimate reality and the oneness of the human soul with it they preached intense training of the mind and body through yogasana breathing exercise and meditation these groups were popular among the low castes and their criticism for the common vedic religion become popular in the non northern india so here i hope you have understand that how does the idea of bhakti emerged and spread to the different parts of india and the famous saints who popularized the idea of bhakti in our next class we will try to understand the ideas of sufism and islam so till then take care of yourself namaste bye